Hello students, welcome to PhD Jobs and Admission. This is Gauri. So in this video, we are going to see detailed explanation about what are the sampling methods. Okay, because in the previous examinations, the questions on this topic has been asked. Like, what is the meaning of sampling methods? What are the different sampling methods? What is probability sampling method? What is non-probability sampling method? Okay. So after viewing this video, all of your concepts re regarding this topic will be cleared. And as well, at the end of this video, I'm going to ask you a question to check whether have you guys understood this topic or not. Okay, and you have to guys answer the question through the comments. Okay, so let us start with this video. So as we know, guys, we have to give PhD entrance exam for University of Kerala, and it is on 13th November. Okay, and it is of total 100 marks and it has two sections, section A and section B. Section A is for research methodology and it carries 50 marks and you have to guys give answers to the 10 questions and each question carries 5 marks. Okay, so you guys have to give answers within 10 points to each question so that you can get more than 4 marks for each question and that's why we are providing you complete course on research methodology okay so in that we are providing you full syllabus video lectures in which theory and mcqs both are available for you guys theory is important as it is the descriptive type examination and mcqs are important to clear more and more concepts okay we are also providing you full syllabus notes and mock tests. We have 10 mock tests like this and each mock test has 40 MCQs. So in total we have 400 MCQs. Okay. We are also providing you more than 1500 MCQs revision PDF so that you can guys revise all these things very well. And all these things are available in the both the languages that is Hindi and English. Okay. So students, if you guys buy this course, then I'm going to give you 100% guarantee that because of this course, you guys will score passing marks in your examination and as well, it will be helpful to tackle with, tackle with your interview sessions as well. So if you guys want to buy this course, then you can download global online app. For that, I have given the link in the description of this video or else you can WhatsApp through these contact numbers and the course fees is only 699 rupees, okay? So students, let us start with our today's lecture. So in this lecture, we are going to see first what is sampling technique, then what are different steps of sampling technique. In that, we are going to see two types of sampling technique, probability and non-probability sampling and further subdivisions of them. And at the last, we are going to see the MCQ, okay? Now students, let us see what is the meaning of sampling technique, okay? So it is doubtful that researcher should be able to collect data from all cases. So there is a need to select a sample and so that researchers use technique to collect data and reduce number of cases and time for data collection. And that technique is called as sampling technique, okay? Sampling technique okay so the entire set of cases from which researcher sample is drawn is called population so population is a term which is called as the entire set of cases from which we take some amount of sample okay and that sample we use in our research okay and so researchers neither have time nor the resources to analyze to analyze the entire population. So they apply sam sampling technique to reduce the number of cases, okay? Now students, there are different steps of sampling technique, okay? So the first step is clearly defined target population, okay? So first stage in the sampling process is to clearly define target population. And as we have seen earlier in this video that population is commonly related to the number of people living in particular country, okay? Now students, the second step is that select sampling frame, okay? So sampling frame is a list of actual cases from which sample will be drawn, okay? And it must be representative of population. So whatever population it is there, we select the sample from that population. But the kind of population which should be actual population from which we are selecting the sample and that population is called the sampling frame, okay? Okay, now students, the third step is that choose sampling technique, okay? 
So taking a subset from chosen sampling frame or the entire population is called sampling. Okay, as we have seen earlier in this video that a sample is the part of the population which we take for our research purposes. So that's why it is the subset okay, from the chosen sampling frame or entire population. So uh, it can be used, that means the sampling can be used to make generalization in relation to existing theory and it also depends on cho choice of sampling technique. Okay, And there are two types of sampling techniques. First is probability or random sampling and the second is non-probability and non-random sampling. Okay. Okay, now students, the first is probability sampling, which is also called as random sampling. Okay, so in this every item in population has equal chance of being included in sample. That means there is random selection of the sample. Okay, so the one way to undertake random sampling would be if researcher was to construct sampling frame first. So in that case, a researcher has to first construct a sampling frame. Okay, and after that, uh, he can use a random number which is generated from computer program, okay, to pick up the sample from the sampling frame. And it has the greatest freedom from bias but may represent most costly, okay, most costly sample in terms of, in terms of time and also energy, energy for given level of sampling error, okay. Now students, there are different types of probability sampling. So the first type is simple random sampling. So in this, every case of population has an equal probability of inclusion in sample, okay. And the disadvantages of this technique is that a complete frame is needed. So it means that list of all units in the whole population is, is needed. So list of all units in the population is needed okay and also the cost of obtaining the sample can be high for example if uh, we are taking the surveys okay by um, personal interviews and if the people are uh, distributed geography geographically to the wider areas then obviously the cost of obtaining the interviews of those people are very high okay and the third disadvantage is that standard errors of estimators can be high, okay? Now students, the second type of probability sampling is systematic sampling, okay? So in systematic sampling, uh, there is uh, where every nth case after random start is selected, okay? For example, if we are doing a survey on, um, you know, consumers, so here consumers are the samples, right? So whenever we are choosing every fifth consumer, okay, from your sample, then it is the systematic sampling, okay? And the advantage of uh, it is that it is uh, simplicity, okay? Now the third type is the stratified random sampling, okay? So in this technique, the population is divided into subgroups and random sample is taken from each subgroup, okay? So here the subgroup is natural state of items, okay? These are the natural set of items, okay? And these subgroups might be based on company size, then gender or occupation. And that's why it is used when there is a great deal of variation within a population, okay? So whenever there is a variation within the population, then you choose some subgroups, right? And based on that, you are taking a sample, okay, randomly from that subgroup, okay. And the purpose of this type of technique is that every subgroup is adequately uh, represented, okay, based on their characteristics, okay. Now, students, the fourth type is the cluster sampling, okay. So, as the name suggests, here the whole population is divided into clusters or groups, okay. And the random sample is taken from these clusters, okay. And these random samples are then taken for the final sampling procedure, okay. So, uh, it is advantageous for those researchers whose subjects are divided over large geographical areas because it saves time and money of the researcher, okay. So, there are stages of doing the cluster sampling. First is that you guys have to choose a cluster grouping, okay. Choose cluster grouping 
for sampling frames such as a type of company or geographical region so geographical region or the type of company are the clusters okay and the second is that number each of the clusters so give the number to the clusters and the third stage is that select sample using random sampling then you have to guys select sample by the random sampling okay now students the last type of probability sampling is the multi stage sampling okay so as the name suggests it is the process of moving from broad to narrow sample using by step by step process so which is which is the multi stages of process okay now the second type of sampling technique is the non probability sampling so as the name suggests there is no random selection of samples over here okay and that's why the clear rational is needed for inclusion of individuals rather than random selection of samples and this type of technique is mostly uh, associated with a uh, case study uh, research design and as well qualitative research okay qualitative research and th this is because case study is mostly tend to focus on small samples and are intended to examine real life phenomenon right not to make a statistical inferences in relation to wider population okay and that's why sample of participants or cases does not need to be representative or, or random okay so there is no need for the random um, you know selection right and uh, that's why Uh, you guys uh, have to uh, give the clear uh, rational which is needed for the inclusion of individuals in your sample okay and that's why we are using non probability sampling technique now students as we have seen there were uh, types of probability sampling so uh, that like there are also types of non probability sampling okay so, so the first type is quota sampling so in quota sampling technique participants are chosen on the basis of predetermined characteristics so that a total sample will have same distribution of characteristics on wider population okay so whenever you are choosing a uh, participants okay or the samples from your population so you are choosing those participants based on their uh, you know particular characteristics and that's why you will get a Uh, your total sample based on the uh, same distribution of those characteristics over the wider range of population now students the second type is the snowball sampling okay so in this type of technique we uses few cases to help encourage other cases to take part in the study and because of this situation what happens it increases the sample size okay so it increases sample size okay and it is applicable in uh, useful in small population which are difficult to assess due to their closed nature okay for example secret societies okay secret societies or you know inaccessible professions in accessible professions okay so the next type is the convenience sampling so as the name suggests uh, it is a very you know uh, favored sampling technique because in this we select participants which are readily and easily available okay and that's why it is inexpensive and easy as well uh, and it helps us to overcome many of the limitations okay overcome limitations okay which is uh, related uh, to the you know which is associated with the research for example whenever we use friends or family as part of our sample then it will be a little bit easier for us to target uh, uh, easier for us than targeting the uh, you know uh, unknown individuals and that's why it is the co convenience sampling technique now students let us see the last type of non probability sampling which is the purposive sampling so as the name suggests in this sampling technique a researcher has a particular uh, kind of purpose for selecting those kind of persons or settings or uh, you know uh, things in their research okay so here we use a kind of a strategy in which particular settings persons or events are selected deliberately in order to provide important information that cannot be obtained from other choices okay and uh, that's why uh, it is where the researcher includes cases cases or you know participants in their research 
participants in their research because they believe that they warrant inclusion okay and even uh, they have the particular uh, kind of a purpose for uh, taking those cases or participants as a sample in their research okay so students let us see uh, whatever we have uh, taken the sampling techniques so we are going to just summarize them so here first is technique second are their strengths and the third one is the weakness so first is a uh, convenience sampling so uh, it has strength like it is least expensive it is least time consuming it is most convenient and it has weakness as well it has selection bias the sample not representative not recommended by descriptive or causal research okay then the second is judgment sampling okay which is the you know as we have seen that it is the purposive sampling technique uh, it has low cost which is its strength it is convenient not time consuming then it is also ideal for exploratory research design and it has weakness that it does not allow generalization and as well it is subjective not objective okay now students the next sampling technique is the quota sampling so it has the strength like a sample can be controlled for certain characteristics okay and it has weakness like it has selection bias and also no assurance next is a snowball sampling so the strength is like can estimate rare characteristics as well and the weakness is it is time consuming okay and the next is simple random sampling so it is easily understood and results are projectable which is its strength and the weaknesses are it is difficult to construct sampling frame it is expensive it has lower precision no assurance of representativeness as well okay next are systematic sampling so it has strengths like it can increase representativeness it is easier to implement than simple random sampling sampling frame not always necessary and the next uh, is that the weaknesses are it can decrease repre representativeness as well okay so uh, it has strength like it can increase representativeness but also it can cause a decrease in representativeness as well okay stratified sampling so the strengths are includes all important sub population precision and the weaknesses are it is difficult to select relevant stratification variables it is expensive and not feasible to stratify on many variables okay and the last one is cluster sampling so it is easy to implement and cost effective so these are the strengths of cluster sampling and it is imprecise difficult to compute interpreted results so these are the weaknesses of cluster sampling okay okay now students after the third stage now the fourth stage in the sampling uh, technique is the determine a sample size okay so um, random sample needs to be of adequate size this is because whenever we generalize from a uh, you know random sample and whenever we want to avoid sampling errors or biases that's why random sample needs to be of adequate size okay to avoid random sample to avoid a uh, random sample and uh, sorry to avoid generalization from random sample generalization from random sample and also to avoid the sampling biases okay sampling biases or sampling errors right okay so uh, what is uh, adequate uh, size okay these things depends on several issues okay which uh, confuse people doing surveys for the first time and this is uh, because what is important here is not the proportion of research okay so here proportion proportion of research is not important but the important thing over here is that whatever uh, you know we are choosing the uh, sample size the adequate sample size from the complexity of population is important so the adequate sample size is the most important thing over here and whenever we are choosing this adequate sample size so these things depends upon the aims of researcher so what are the aims of the researcher and the uh, next thing is that what are the kinds of statistical manipulation that uh, the researcher is using in the data analysis okay so the statistical techniques statistical 
techniques used for data analysis okay so whenever we want to calculate the sample size there is a formula and the formula is like n is equal to p 100 minus p in bracket z square upon e square okay so on this uh, equation uh, questions or the you know problems has been asked in the examination okay so the here n is required sample size then p is percentage occurrence of state or condition e is percent maximum error required and z is value corresponding to level of confidence required okay now students the fifth step in the sampling technique is the collection of data so once we have the target population then sampling frame sampling technique and sample size in our uh, hand then the next step is is the collection of data so you collect the data okay and the last step or the stage in the sampling technique is assess a response rate okay so response rate is the number of cases right agreeing to take part in the study okay so whatever there are number of cases who are agree to take part in the study so this is called as the response rate okay so in reality most researchers never achieve okay never achieve 100% response rate and these uh, these cases are taken from original sample okay so whatever response rate we are getting so the cases here are from original sample right and also researcher does not get 100% response rate and this is because there are multiple uh, reasons behind it so the first reason is that refuse to respond okay so the participants refuse to respond in the you know uh, research the second reason can be ineligibility to respond in eligibility to respond that the third reason can be inability to respond okay inability to respond and the fourth reason can be the respondent is there but researchers are unable to make contact them okay so researchers unable to contact so there are multiple reasons like this like this okay so that's why response rate is important because each non response is liable to bias a uh, final sample right and that's why clearly defining sample then employing right sampling technique generating a large sample in some respects can help to reduce the likelihood of this sample bias okay and that's why whatever stages we are doing in sampling techniques are really most important things okay now students the today's mcq question is is like of the following sampling methods which is probability method which is the really a uh, easiest question okay and the options are judgment method then quota method simple random and last one is convenience okay so guys answer this question yeah, through the comment okay so guys thank you for watching this video if you like my video then please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel okay